kind of one of those that came out of left field, right? Like we've got Brad Gazan, you have uh, Quentin Westbrook, you've got Westberg. with the two you, Westberg. Sorry, my bad, Quentin Westberg. <laughs> um, it's been a long day. <laughs> uh, you have Justin Garces and Vicente Reyes. Mm. We'll end up with the twos, of course. You know you're going to have to loan one of them back down, but. Now you bring in a third quote unquote MLS caliber goalkeeper. And it, it definitely does kind of change the whole goalkeeping routine up a little bit because it, it definitely seems like you're you're basically forcing Garces and Reyes back down to the twos no matter what. Yeah. It also kind of makes you wonder is is Gazan ready, really ready to go? You go back to what was mentioned, uh, I think uh, yeah, Joe Patrick with 30 South with us and 92 on the game had put out back in November, he asked um, Carlos Bocanegra about the, the goalkeeping position and about bringing in guys that are going to challenge Brad Gazan for that, that starting goalkeeper role. And he said that was one of the things that he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of the season, absolutely. I think you might see one or the other in terms of, you know, Quentin or uh, Diop, but, you know, you, you, you got to imagine Gazan's absolutely going to be fighting his way back into what he's going to consider his role as a starter. Do Atlanta trade either Westberg or Diop and try to get a return? Maybe at some I point mean, in the season. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if, if Guzan's not ready and one of the other two start and they do well, and then Guzan's ready to fully start on a, on a weekly basis, then maybe you have some trade value there. Because uh, teams get injuries. We learned this last year right like anything can happen and then you can move some players around but I, I think that this is the year the last year that they're really going in and saying all right here's the veterans that we have and you've got these two young kids waiting and this was the, the argument that we had with Conway over the past couple of years when Joseph was hurt like he should be playing and he was up with us and he was the second or third guy just not getting minutes and then as soon as we send him down again last year, what happened? He started scoring again, Conway. So I think this is more get them playing time, get them playing on a regular basis, and then have them ready for next season, have them fully recover from their end. I think they were both hurt, right? At, um, at some point throughout the season. Yeah, I mean, they were good now, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, they're healthy now, but you want to have them getting playing. You want to have them playing minutes on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. I think that's just what they have. And next year, you're going to see the youth take over this spot because, uh, I mean, Guzan's last year, their contract. And I think both these contracts are one year. So, yeah. I mean, you're yeah. basically just wiping out these three guys. And then you have your youth movement next year. Yeah. And, and that's, not a, that's not a bad thing. I mean, because you also have to understand, like everybody, we, we always talk about the first team and the twos, right? because you have Garces and Reyes, not the twos. And and both of them, they're outstanding for their age, absolutely. And and they will be, in some way, whether it's with Atlanta United or not, they will be involved in the senior team at some point soon, right? But you have quite a few in the academy coming up for Atlanta United as well. One of them is Nash Skoglin, who has, has been phenomenal in the times that we've been able to watch him. And, yes, he's young, but – if we're if we're talking all the way down through the academy, you have guys coming up, and that's it's a good problem to have essentially. And yeah, I mean, you're looking at Brad, who is essentially, um, uh, you know, he he won't tell you this, I'm sure, but he's on the last portion of his career, and he's yeah. he's on the last year of his contract. So, whatever happens to him after Atlanta United, that's that's on him. But it, in terms of the team, you have those options, like you said, Tommy with, um, you know, Justin Garces and Vicente Reyes potentially moving up one or the other. And then then you've got, um, you know, another year to, to develop them and, and work something out. Having two young goalies ready to go is is never a bad thing. Yeah. You know, right. worst case, you're able to move one. You can make one your franchise guy, move the other one out and, and make some money off of them. So, yeah. I mean, there, there's there's teams that have done that, you know, and, soccer and, and hockey you know you it's it's a good problem to have the the, the hard part is is just making that decision on, on who you're going to let go and, and who you're going to make your franchise guy but either way next year you're not going to have a huge budget 
going to, if, if you kept these two young young you know goalies I think that's fine because now all of a sudden your your cap hit is minimal on what you're paying on that position where Brad Guzan was one of the highest paid goalies while he was before the injury right like mm-hmm. I think he I think he took a a pay cut actually last yeah, year before the, the injury which was great um but I think it extended his contract a year which is I think why he's here now maybe I'm wrong um but I thought that that's what happened is he took a cut but it extended it a year so you have him, which is great. I mean, it is what it is that you, that Brad's back for one more year, and you know, hopefully that he has a great year. But next year, you're going to be able to take some of that money that you've, quite frankly, have overspent on that position for many years, and be able to, to move it around into other positions like the midfield. Yeah, in a perfect world, you know, Sean Johnson would be here. Right. I mean, come back Sean home, Johnson's, buddy. Yeah, exactly. He's still withheld a job right now. I know. At least this Toronto that were very interested in him, but I mean, I wish that I mean, granted, Brad's still here, and if you were reading Sean Johnson, then it'd be as a starter, not a backup. But yeah, I think I think now that ship has sailed because even yeah. what Atlanta United put out today was like, oh, our goalkeeping core for the first team is essentially complete now. So wouldn't yep. expect any more changes there at all. Yep, and um, going to Zil's point, talking about Reyes. You know, maybe one of the keepers in Atlanta United system ends up maybe being the next guy got Slanina. I mean, you look at Slanina, yeah. I think Chelsea, he's he's in Europe right now. Mm-hmm. He had a phenomenal career with Chicago. I mean, mm-hmm. he wasn't incredible. I mean, he had some down games, certainly, but he shot up the academy ranks, started out as a first-team keeper, and eventually started to move overseas, which was easy because he already had a European passport, but I mean, maybe Reyes, maybe Garces is that next you know, player that does command the move overseas, and Ilya that are able to make a return. And for for yeah, him. and to kind of to kind of add on to that, and what you're talking about Zil's point, um, Reyes is he's been getting called up, but he's getting called up to the Chilean U20 squad this month mm-hmm. for the Common Ball Championship. And you're looking at him potentially playing in the Olympics and the U20 World Cup. Mm-hmm. So the, I mean, the dude, and that's not to mention what he's done for the twos. He's been phenomenal. Um, so, I mean, from a business perspective, yeah, I mean, you develop him, and and if if you do want to let him go, I mean, you're you're going to get something out of him for sure. And and I would love to see another Gaga Slanina type move. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time now is when Atlanta has to start looking at the future in terms of goalkeepers, because going back to Tommy's point, you've got essentially, you know, you got Brad Gazan on his last year and then you've got two guys who are MLS goalkeepers essentially, but they're on a year of contract and they're there. I think because in part the, the front office and, and, and the folks in the club probably have a little bit of PTSD from the amount of injuries that happened last year. And they don't want to have to go through the position that they got put in last season with all the injuries and, and the issues. So you you do have at least a couple of guys that are proven. Now, granted, I don't know a ton about Claymont Dio, but if just based on what I've read and what I do know about him, I think I would put in Quentin Westberg as the second option over over him. But that's what competing for that position is all about. So yeah, I can see Westberg maybe – that's a year's open cup keeper. So yeah. Maybe your least cup keeper because remember that's coming on board in 2023. So I could see that happening. And then if Atlanta were to progress further in those competitions, you know, Brad would be back as the number one keeper. So that's kind of the scenario I see setting up. Granted, Westbrook's 36, Diop is 29. So that's there's that age situation. But yeah, yeah I, w- I would probably. Say that Westbrook has the edge right now. I mean, before Priest has really even started as the number one backup behind Greg Uzan, uh, with the opportunity to maybe start in a few spots, like I was saying, an Open Cup and Leagues Cup later this year. 